I warned you. I've been saying it for years. I've been warning people for years. Put out the siren song. I was like the lighthouse in the distance. I don't know what lighthouses sound like, I apologize. But I've been warning people that movies that have been coming out in the last couple years are getting awfully familiar, awfully samey. It's almost like Hollywood has become so scared to put out anything original, the only bet they take these days is to keep releasing the same shit. And that is why in the top 10 highest grossing box office bleh, of 2024 so far, it's all movie sequels. Yay! Thanks, Disney, for setting the standard. Thank you. That's my sarcastic clapping. This is bullshit. Let's talk about all these lovely films that have come out and reached the top of the market in 2024. As I'm talking about these top 10 movies, if you wouldn't mind subscribing and hitting the notification bell, if this in fact becomes something you'd find yourself enjoying, just keep it in the back of your mind. Just, uh, what did you want me to do? Oh yeah, just subscribe, it's free. Uh, Jessica, it's it's free still? Thanks, Jess. Call her, I, I call her Jess sometimes, we have a good rapport. I fired Sheila a week ago, so she's the new intern. <laughs> Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Oh, anyway, in the number 10 spot, and keep in mind, 2024 is not over as of recording this. It's possible that some of these will shift a little bit, but I don't think, I don't think anything on this list is going to fall off entirely. And if it does, it's just going to be replaced by another sequel. Because in the last few years, I have noticed Hollywood ratcheting up the sequel, the prequel, the sidequel, the fuckquel, the spin-off. The legacy sequel, which is kind of its own thing. We just had Gladiator 2. They're kind of soft reboots where they pretend to be sequels, but they're really just telling the same story again because it's familiar and it makes people feel happy. Well, I'm not happy. I'm not happy and we're gonna get to why, but uh, here, let's, let's break down the top 10. In the number 10 spot, we have Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. That sounds familiar. What, where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, it was the Planet of the Apes and return to the Planet of the Apes and escape from the Planet of the Apes and Planet of the Apes by Tim Burton and then Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And like a billion other Planet of the Apes movies that have come and gone over the years, we have another one. This is technically the fourth in the, uh, in the last trilogy that came out by Fox that's now owned by Disney because Disney owns everything and uh, life is fleeting and this is what I'm doing with my time here on planet Earth. Uh, they own everything. And they've decided that everything they're going to make is going to be a sequel or something familiar that makes us feel all warm and gooey inside because we have now sculpted and shaped nostalgia to be all that we know and love. And the way to bring in new generations is to trick them into thinking something is fun and new when in fact it's just a legacy sequel like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Gladiator 2, Top Gun Maverick, which is great, but still, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing anymore? So yes, we have Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes in 10. We have Bad Boys Ride or Die, which is the fourth Bad Boys film. In the number eight spot, we have Venom, The Last Dance, which is still making money. It's, it's hitting that half a billion dollar mark soon. It might be over it by the time I'm finished saying the sentence. People love these shitty Venom movies. Who can blame them? Me, I can blame them. They're bad. We should want better. In the number seven spot, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I mentioned it, here we are. In the number six, Kung Fu Panda 4. Um, I like the Kung Fu Panda movies. Kung Fu Panda 4 is genuinely terrible. It's a bad movie. It, it, the story sucks. The animation feels uninspired. It's, it's fine, it still looks pretty. It's 2024 after all, but uh, yeah, it's a bad movie and it's ranked as number six <laughs> for the year. In the number five spot, Godzilla X Kong. X gonna give it to you. He's gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to you. And they're gonna keep giving it to you because they keep making money. It's dumb and fun and loud. People love it. We eat it up. Num, 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 num. Dune part two in the number four spot. 
not only is it a sequel, it's also a sequel to a movie that was already a remake of another movie based on a book series, of course. In the number three spot, we have Despicable Me 4. Remember what I said about Kung Fu Panda 4? You can just reuse all of that again for Despicable Me 4. In the number two spot, Deadpool and Wolverine. The third Deadpool movie, the 850th Hugh Jackman Wolverine film. In the number one spot, it's Inside Out 2. Now, I already know a couple movies that are probably going to knock a few down. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, that's bye-bye. That's not going to stay on this list. Because Wicked will take its place. Wicked, based on a Broadway musical, based on a book, based on The Wizard of Oz. I guess we could call this one fair game. This might take the top 10 out of only sequel territory. Keep in mind, this is the first time in history that all of the top 10 highest grossing movies have been sequels, prequels, things of that nature. So Wicked, I, I suppose we could count as an original film that's not, you know, a sequel to anything, but it kind of, it kind of is, kind of is. And then the other one is Moana 2. Moana 2 is going to be on this list. It'll probably be in the top three. People eat that crap up, and I eat it up too. I like Moana. Who doesn't? Um, but this is a sad list. It's, it's truly kind of despicable me that we are at this point in our, in our movie history where big budgets, where all of the studios have now decided that all they can do to really get audiences to the theater, this is a fault they have to lay on themselves, by the way, is to make samey formulaic crap. Now, this is a fun article that I'm looking at because it actually lists off another year and another set of top tens. That year was 1993. Let's take a listen to the movies that came out there. I imagine it's a lot of sequels and prequels, right? And sidequels and fuckwills. Well, for starters, we have Jurassic Park. No, not Jurassic World. Not Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Not Jurassic World Fallen Franchise. Not Jurassic World Domino's Pizza. No, this is just the original Jurassic Park by Steven Spielberg. Also happens to be one of my favorite movies of all time. Original, different, blew people away with the special effects and tech on display. Absolutely ingenious what they did with the CG and the practical effects and the marriage of the two, the blending of the two. And if you watch that movie today, sure, there's going to be cracks in the corners. But overall, it still looks pretty damn good. Because of how they utilized shadow, how they played with sound design, how these actors worked within the environments that were practical sets. Let's move on. Mrs. Doubtfire. Not Mrs. Doubtfire 2. Not a gender swap from a Mr. Doubtfire. No, this is just a one and done situation with Robin Williams. Dressing up as a lovely old nanny who's going to try to get close with his kids that he failed to be close with originally. It's a heartwarming film. It's a touchstone film. Most have seen it. Most should. All should. Uh, what do we got next? The Fugitive. I didn't kill my wife. Harrison Ford. Another fully unique thriller. And it got you on the edge of your seat. When he's jumping off the side of that fucking dam into the water. Holy crap, my heart was racing. Probably not as fast as his was. Or Tommy Lee Jones. Great film. They did make a sequel to it called U.S. Marshals years later with... Uh, Wesley Snipes. Not quite as good. But just the fact they didn't even call it The Fugitive 2 shows where the mindset was then. It wasn't about making sequels. It was just about making good movies. Obviously, the goal is always to make money. But back then, it felt a little less formulaic, a little less manufactured. There was, and, I, and listen, I'm not discrediting the people that work on these new modern movies. There's always going to be passion behind the scenes. There's always going to be blood, sweat, and tears poured into every production. There's tons of animators, lots of actors, writers, the directors. They're all putting the work in. It's just the movies that are getting greenlit are doing so not because they're wholly original, pushing boundaries, telling new stories, but because it's all about generating the bottom line money machine. And that's the sad reality that pisses a lot of people off like myself and the thing is i like sequels and i don't really have a big problem with these legacy sequels i mean i think they're all kind of garbage 
but I will still go and, and at least try to be entertained by them. But that doesn't mean it's what I want. It's just what we're given. Uh, Sleepless Seattle. Nice little rom-com. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan. Indecent Proposal. Wholly original. In the Line of Fire. The Pelican Brief. Another thriller. Pretty sure it's based on a book. Schindler's List. Based on true events. Steven Spielberg. Black and white film. I believe it's over three hours long. Another piece of brilliant filmmaking. Came out the same year as Jurassic Park, the other Steven Spielberg film. This guy was a legend. And I hate to end on a cliffhanger, but that's exactly what I'm going to do. Sylvester Stallone style. Cliffhanger. Up in the mountains, against the elements. John Lithgow's the villain. Stallone absolutely hamming it up. <laughs> we got to get out this mountain. There's always a chance. That's from Daylight, actually. But I like Daylight as well, when they're trapped under the ground. There's always a chance. He just says that over and over again. It's sweet. My favorite part of Daylight is when he has this little glow stick. One of those little ones that you shake to turn on. And he's like, and he seriously makes this loud grunt. Like he's doing the most amazing thing ever. Picking up Thor's hammer for the first time. You follow me out this way. There's always a chance. Side tangent aside. What a list. What an absolutely banger of a list. It, it just makes today's movies, the top 10, look embarrassing. The number one on that is Inside Out 2, a good movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Not near as good as the first, but still a well-made, competent movie. But it also didn't need to exist. Deadpool and Wolverine, fun as hell, good time, makes sense. Did we need it? Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> Because I wanted to see these two together on screen. So fan service at its finest. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Serviceable. Legacy sequel. A requel. Whatever you want to call it. Does it need to happen? Does it need to be here? No. I had fun with it though. Good time at the movies. It's sad though that these are in the top 10. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty sad that this is the top 10 we're dealing with. Kung Fu Panda 4. Are you out of your fucking mind? Come on. Come on people. Your kids don't need to go to the movies when they're four years old just to be entertained. They have tablets at home. You don't need to take them to Despicable Me 4. It's going to be out on Peacock in two weeks anyways. You can check it out on the cock. I'm looking at another year on here. What is this, 2000? One sequel, Mission Impossible 2. We got X-Men, the original. We got Castaway, the OG Gladiator. Meet the Parents, The Perfect Storm, What Women Want, Dinosaur, What Lies Beneath, and Scary Movie. All of those, almost all of those, are originals. Scary Movie is a parody off of Scream. You have Dinosaur, which was this really aggressive, state-of-the-art attempt by Disney to do a 3D CGI film. It's okay. It's not terrible. It kind of had a poor man's... um. Land Before Time feel to it. Land Before Time, far superior, of course. I believe that's produced by Steven Spielberg. He's a legend. The guy's a legend. Meet the Parents, a funny, raunchy comedy with Ben Stiller and Robert De Niro. Absolutely hilarious film, which would span a couple terrible sequels. And then X-Men. One of the original big new superhero movies to really set the standard. Only superseded by Blade. And then to follow, we get Spider-Man. So we have this beautiful trinity of uh, superhero movies that's going to lead us into the future where there are big budget superhero flicks being made. But not made in a gross corporate way yet, like later MCU would be or the DCEU in general. No, these were movies that did feel standalone and felt contained. And I respected them for it. But here we are today with... Uh, <laughs> 10, 11, 12 Fast and the Furious movies, if you count the spin-offs and the fact that they have more in production. Another eight or nine Mission Impossible films. Uh, a million you know, Pixar movies getting sequels and, and live action interpretations of Disney movies that were classics. It just feels so sad now. And that's not saying we're not getting new shit. There is plenty of new stuff coming out every year. It's just not getting the push from the studios. It's not getting priority feature. A24 is great at this. That's why they're constantly being heralded as um, 
one of the good studios working out there today because they are championing indie films. They're repackaging them. They're giving them the spotlight. And whether or not it works, that's, I mean, I'm here to let you know that, whether or not a movie works for May 24. But damn, I have a fun time going to them on a level that's much greater than going to something like a Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, where I'm already going in with the mindset of exactly what I'm going to see in this film. There are zero surprises, there are zero stakes, and the playbook is so formulaic. The same with a Moana 2, a Despicable Me 4, even Inside Out 2. You know the playbook. You know where they're gonna hit you, they're gonna pull at the heartstrings, they're gonna play the sad music, and it's all gonna feel familiar. Not bad, not knocking them to an extent that, uh, you know, means I'm pissed. I actually enjoy most of the movies I see in this realm. But it's not the same as experiencing a brand new original film for the first time. There is nothing more magical than seeing a state-of-the-art matrix come out. Or seeing this huge, larger-than-life, close encounters of the third kind on the big screen. Or Independence Day for that matter, listening to that president's speech, watching that UFO get taken down. It doesn't matter if it's a little schlocky. It's fresh, it's original, it's exciting, and that's what I want more of in the future. But I fear, because of what I'm looking at on this list, we're gonna see more and more and more of the Frozen 3s, the Moana 3s, <laughs> the live action crap. There is a new trailer for Lilo and Stitch, which I'm going to talk about in a second. It's never going to end. It's too bad. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. I want to hear from you, though. This was a longer rant than I expected it to be, but I think it was one that's well-deserved because of all the shit I've been watching in the last few years. Please let me know. Like the video and subscribe if you want to. Hit that bell so these videos show up in your feed. Um, if you really want to support the channel and this one-man band, become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Different tier levels with different offerings, 300 exclusive videos, and counting every month. If you're at the higher level, you get a vlog, a vlog, some people call it, most people call it that. That's very custom tailored. It features my family. It's very polished. I put a lot of work into them. There's one coming up just around the riverbend, Pocahontas. I'm surprised they haven't sequeled that shit or made live action. <laughs> I should keep my mouth shut. It's probably coming now. But yeah, these are very uh, well-made things. There's an episode of The Cringe every month at the $5 membership. Just, just check it out. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. I would appreciate it. And hopefully, I see you next time.